a stirring of the placid waters of the imagination took place on the morning of my embarkment hacia el legendario norte, to the legendary north, from Albuquerque to the high country. Professors Michelle Kells and Levi Romero honored me with the role in the Mi Cultura Cura Testimonios de la Nuevo México program. And I somehow knew that through this idea of curanderismo, or healing, by means of culture, that a pantheon of symbols and experiences to be carved on the rain-softened clay lay colorfully ahead. As a passenger in the company of Recio Pod her hero, Professor and compa Levi Romero, my observations began to take form on those northern New Mexico highways. Cruising the New Mexican village trail in New Mexico poet laureate's troca was an honor beyond words for me. The plática was ceaseless, the content colorful and firme. Our conversation ranged from growing up as artists who clandestinely observed and mused over the world around them while surrounded by the often unforgivingly tough Manito villages of Nuevo Mexico. To penitente tribunales and moradas, some still utilized, some crumbling in hidden villages dotting the sage and pinon hills under billowed cotton clouds. On this two and a half hour journey up to Brazos Canyon, just east of Tierra Maria, in the San Juan or Tusas Mountains. The Resolanic learning was vibrant. Levi, it seems, couldn't help but notice every nook and tint in the topography, or intentionality in Manito's structural artisanry. The smooth slopes, light greens, pinks, and yellows of the naturally derived dyes of paint on smooth plaster or soquete, mud, over slumping adobe walls, even the manner in which vehicles, some utilized four-wheel drive trucks, others rusting 57s, were parked. Every descanso that we passed was acknowledged by my companion as he described how they grew more elaborate the further north one travels. A descanso, or place of rest, is a perennial ofrenda, a cultural practice usually marked by a cross and ornate floral arrangements placed in the general area where a loved one has lost their life, aquí en Nuevo México. On this journey, I vividly remember a gray plastered adobe house tilted starkly downward on a sharp incline descending from the wind-chiseled sandstone bluffs overhead. Pertaining to this seemingly simple structure, Levi discussed Manito building customs stemming partially from community planning concepts utilized by Indo-Hispano cultures for construction called Las Leyes de las Reinas de las Indias the laws of the queens of the Indies. This centuries-old knowledge system melded with that of the Pueblo peoples, provided a living blueprint for construction technique and structural angling according to prevailing winds, foundational soil content, and community planning in concert with season sun positions a meticulous practice still utilized for agrarian practices, including acequia systems, the sowing of las tres hermanas, the three sisters, corn, squash, and beans, fruit orchards and borrego, sheep, or puerco, pig, slaughter technique. I silently marveled at the intricate mosaic of Iberic, North African, Syrian, 
and Moorish knowledge systems interwoven with Puebloan construction and knowledge that my forebearers fostered from antiquity to the present. I had never quite seen my New Mexican villages in this light. Perhaps it is because they are shrouded in modernity or loitered by capitalist bred beasts in the clever guise of mobile homes and dollar stores. Yet, even against the tragic backdrop of loss since Kearney rode in with his manifest destiny flag, enduring customary practices have been passed down as an exquisite symbiosis with the natural world. Winding our way past the towering cathedrals of the Sangre de Cristos, melding into the San Juan and Brazos Mountains, a feeling of pilgrimage set my heart ablaze. Crossing through La Jara, Regina, Cayena, Coyote, Youngsville, Cangilón, Cebolla, Nutrias. Then at last, climbing that final tumbling hill, then bending downward onto the cracked pavement streets where La Alianza Federal de Mercedes, the Federal Alliance of Land Grants, and Reyes Lopez Tijerina raided the county courthouse in 67, decrying tierra o muerte, land or death, to the four winds and the darn right into Uncle Sam's ear. And as we wound our way into the thickening woods of Brazos Canyon, the first leg of our journey ended in the serenity of a pine-scented breeze and my compas declaration, mira el venado, check it out, it's a deer. The symbolism of this apparition at that moment was subtle, but it finished the day as sacrosanct. The next day I arose early to the soft silence of the Brazos Mountains. As I conjured my morning coffee brew, Mano Levi rocked that cabin door knocking, pow, pow. Pase, compadre. I offered him some coffee and we swap, swapped some platica. He told me stories about his life and friends like the indomitable, indomitable spirit of his old compa, Falcon Eddie, Falcon Eddie, and how they used to hang out in the Resolana, bringing me back to Falcon Eddie he says in a poem, and the bros down at the river near San Juan, and at a place they call Sunny Brook. He then picked up my weathered six string and began to pluck the old Bob Dylan song, One Cup of Coffee. The rich tonalities and cadence I've often heard woven into his poetry soared into the pine vigas. The smell of fresh coffee tumbling through the air met the song's theme with the graceful repose. And the thick, marrowed ghosts of the Greenwich Village beat poets sitting down to swap vernacular acrobatics with Norteño Campesino word conjurers suddenly filled the room with poetic sanctity. As my compa finished the tune, and took his last drink of coffee, seemingly toasting to Dylan. We decided to head north out of Brazos Canyon, following the Chama into the river valley. After meeting up with a classmate from our previous spring semester class and engaging in conversations about the reclusifying effects of COVID with our Chama resident friend, whose great uncle wrote the ballad of Ira Hayes, made famous by Johnny Cash. We headed north to the outskirts of town. Suddenly, a hand-painted sign, St. Patrick's Parish, flashed in my periphery. I brought it to Levi's attention, who subsequently threw a mean yui, as we'd say in the Rio Abajo vernacular. 
we turned onto a little dirt road and pointed our sights at old San Patricio's Campo Santo. Then quickly drawn to a prayer garden at the back of the terreno, we walked around the manito patterned stations of the cross. Old painted tractor tires piled as altares holding small bultos, glass encased sacred items. Set in rustic pine and Jesus crucificado in the center. The crucificado or crucified status as Levi described, comes from the stories of the piercing of his side by a Roman soldier, indicating the closure to the crucifixion for New Mexican artesanos and santeros. We circled throughout the rustically camped labyrinth and pondered cultural markings, etchings, and painting styles that I remember seeing as a boy growing up in Belén, Nuevo Mexico. One example being the painted tires. Man, we used to paint them everywhere. Painted tires all over town. Painted tires bolted to railroad ties as playground equipment. Painted tires around front yards with religious statues of San Isidro and San Jose. I think is the, this is the Nuevo Mexicano's way of shaping and bending in defiance the shoes of industrialization and catastrophic postmodern wreckage into art. Before we finally departed, a faint sound of flowing water grabbed my attention. I looked onto the wooded perimeter and faintly glimpsed the soft emerald shimmer of an acequia flowing translucently over dark velvet soil and omnicolored granite and shale rocks, carved smooth by years of its life-giving confluence. Unlike our acequias in Rio Abajo, with waters inundated in the red mud, chocolate como Chile Cali Caribe, Norteño acequias flow crystalline bearing their bedrock and the shimmer of golden mineral flecks. Something about the realization that an acequia flowed through this solemn place rendered it sacred. We were both overtaken with excitement and without a second thought, walked over, took off our shoes, then stood as in ceremony in its waters. For the Nuevo Mexicano, Agua es vida, water is life.